Are you on a dark or empty path seeking answers? Watch this video exposing the dark lies, deceiving many to the truth. The meltdown of the American culture. Today we're going to do part four of this five part series. And this week we are going to be concentrating on the assembly. What about the assembly? Okay, well let's look at the assembly today. Okay, the assembly today, how would you, we, we describe the assembly of today? Now I'm going to say something here that, that uh, applies to some uh, assemblies and not all assemblies. And uh, these things we'll, we will, might see in our own assemblies and it might make us scratch our heads and wonder about them. Okay, assembly today. What's the first thing we see in assemblies today? False teachers. Now you don't have anybody up, get up there behind your pulpit and say, oh, I'm a false teacher, but listen to me. Okay, the devil doesn't work like that, doesn't work openly like that. And, but how can we tell false teachers? Okay, false teachers... They teach you got things. What is a false teacher? It's a person who teaches things that aren't in the scriptures. And what do I mean by not in the scriptures? Well, let me give you a few examples of things that are not in the scriptures that they teach behind pulpits today. And again, this is for some assemblies, not all assemblies. Okay, how about the prosperity gospel? What is the prosperity gospel? Give, 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 and you'll receive. Now, this is a biblical principle, but it needs to be held up in Scripture uh, contextually. And that is in context of the Scriptures. Yes, Yahweh wants us to give. Yahweh, Yahweh blesses those who give. But we have to, to make sure we're in the context of the Scriptures. Of course, when we give our tithes and our offerings, which is a taboo subject behind pulpits uh, not all pulpits but some pulpits and that is that we we are not able to give now you might not know this but we're not we are not able to give our tithes and offerings like they did in the scriptures why because their tithes and offerings that they gave in the scriptures if you read the old testament they gave of their animals their flocks their sheep, and all that, okay? And we, of course, can't do that today, and we don't do that today. We have animal uh, activists all over us about that. So, but there's a lot of people out there say to give, give, give your money. Give your money to us, and you're going to prosper. Well, we don't find this nowhere in Scripture. This give to me, give to me, give to me, so we can, so uh, you can be blessed. This is not found in scripture. Okay. Give to me, give to me, give to me. Well, I've, I've seen articles about pastors and preachers and big name people in uh, assemblies uh, driving jets and limos and having big houses and all this. Well, my question is, we're giving, giving, giving. Where's that money going to? Is that going to help the orphans and the widows and the people that are in need more than us? Which is what the scriptures want us to do with our money. I do not ask for tithes and offerings ever on this ministry. Yahweh has blessed us to keep this ministry going without tithes and offerings. And because I don't want to get caught up in this Give, 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 and you'll be blessed. Prosperity gospel junk. And that's what it is. It's junk. Can you imagine if we gave our tithes and offerings to the widows and the orphans and the people overseas who really, really need it? How much, how much better they would be and how much more blessed we would be? You see... And this might not go over well with some pastors and big name uh, preachers. But we are more blessed 
when we give our tithes and our offerings to widows and orphans and those that are overseas that are in need more than we give to our local assembly. That doesn't sound right, I know. But we do need to give to our local assembly to keep the local assembly going. But the scriptures are, are clear that we're supposed to give to the widows. We're supposed to take care of the widows and the orphans. And those that are in need, the poor among us. This prosperity gospel is a false gospel. It's a false teaching that a lot of pastors have latched on to for their own greed. How about the name it and claim it? gospel. There's a lot of pastors and preachers out there who do a name it and claim it gospel. You name it, you claim it, you got it. Where is that in scripture? Show me the, the book, chapter, and verse where that is in scriptures. Because I don't ever read it, the name it and claim it gospel. I don't ever see that in scripture. The name it and claim it gospel, it's, it's a, another false doctrine is taught by, by big name pastors and big name preachers out there. There is no name it and claim it. How about send your money to me and we'll be, you'll be blessed. I was just, I just spoke about that. You hear a lot of pastors, a lot of the big name preachers and teachers out there say, Send your money to us, and you'll be blessed. Last time I read the scriptures, it didn't say nothing about giving to my pastor to, to, so I could be blessed. The scriptures are clear. It's give, give to the widows and the orphans and those that are in need, the poor, and we'll be blessed. The scriptures in the book of Matthew talk about that. It says about uh, if... You gave to the, the poor and the widows and, and the needy. And they said, when do we do this? You did it to the least of them. You did it to me. Okay, I'm not quoting that exactly, of course. But I don't have that scripture right in front of me. But the scriptures are clear that we're supposed to give to those that are less, uh, more needy than us. There is no, uh, send your money to us and you'll be blessed. A feel-good message. <laughs> feel, feel good message. What is that? It's a, that's a pet your your saints message. What do I mean by that? I mean to, to teach to, to speak behind the pulpit what the, the saints want to hear. Don't step on their toes. Don't step on their toes type of teaching. In other words, preach a good gospel, but don't preach about sin. That's a major problem behind our pulpits today. A lot of pe uh, pe preachers and teachers have stopped teaching about sin. They teach, oh, you just be a good person, you'll go to heaven. You just do good and you'll go to heaven. This is a false doctrine from the pits of hell. We need our, we need in these last days, we need in these last days our, our toes stepped on with the gospel. We need to hear if we're in sin. There's, we shouldn't have this uh, comfort the, the, the Believers type of uh, assembly. Say things that only aren't going to ruffle their feathers. We need in these last days to have our feathers ruffled. We need to be woken up from our sleep. You see, the saints in the, of today, again, this is some saints, not all saints, need to be woken up. Need to be woken up to the fact that there's people that are dying, going to a devil's hell. And all we're doing is sitting there in a, 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 
in a pew listening to a good, feel good message. And that's all it is. You know, sad to say, you could go into a lot of your assemblies today. I would say a majority of your assemblies today. You could go into your assembly barefooted. Now, of course, that would kind of look silly, wouldn't it? What do I mean, you could go into your, your assembly barefooted? Because why? Because you don't have to worry about your toes getting stepped on in services anymore. You don't have to worry about the preacher stepping on your toes. Because they, they, they're not going to step on your toes. They don't want to lose their assemblies. They don't want to lose their saints. They don't want to lose the money coming in. Why? Because it's all about this. You know, we spoke about a corrupt government. You know, that there's a lot of assemblies that are corrupt too. Goes back to that name it and claim it. Prosperity gospel. Send us your money and you'll be blessed. While we drive around, we fly around in jets. But when it comes to the teaching of the gospel, don't tap, step on my toes. People go into assemblies today, and it's sad because most of the assemblies today, the people go out of the assembly the same way they came in. People in our assemblies today come in looking for something different. They come into our assemblies, there's people that come into the assemblies looking for, for something more than what they have. And it's a, it's a sad thing because they don't get that. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't receive that from behind the pulpit. They don't get what they need. What happens to a child if you don't feed them? They'll starve to death. You know what? That's what's happening in our assemblies today. We're being starved to death with, from the gospel. Because we're not being, from the pulpits, they're not being taught. People are not being taught what they need to hear. They're not being fed the word of Yahweh. They're being fed. All this other stuff from behind the pulpits now. Feel good messages. Oh, it's, it's gospel. It's the word. But it's just a feel good message. Pastors and preachers today need to get away from those feel good messages. And teach and preach sin is sin. And feed the saints. Instead of starving them to death. Isaiah chapter 56 verses 9 through 12. All ye beasts of the field come to devour. Yea, all ye beasts in the forest, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain. From his quarter, come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. That's this, this, uh, this teachings and, and preachings that are coming across the pulpit for today. Is that they are just looking for themselves and again this is some preachers not all preachers okay now uh, let's go to 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13 through 15 for such are false apostles deceitful workers 
transforming themselves into the apostles of Messiah. And no more will for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. This look good, smell good, feel good, talk well good type of preachers. The scriptures talk greatly about them. Wow, look at that. It's it changed into an angel of light. They they look good from behind the pulpit. They preach a good message. They they dress well. They 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 present themselves well. But what do they teach? What do they preach? That's the real question here. Acts chapter 20, verses 28 through 31. Take heed therefore unto yourselves, and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit hath made you overseers, to feed the assembly of Yahweh. Which... Hold on. Look at that right there. We'll stop right there for just a second. Feed the flock with, over which the Holy Spirit hath made you overseers. Look at that. It talks about how we're supposed to feed the flock, not starve them to death. We're supposed to, according to the Holy Spirit, we're supposed to feed them. Feed people. Overseers to feed the assembly of Yahweh. Please continue. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my deporting shall grievous woes enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Okay, wow, look at this. I mean, how much clearer could it be? Departing, he's, after his departing, he's, there's gonna be grievous wolves come in to the flock. If you have a, a flock of sheep and you have wolves come in, they're going to scatter the sheep and they're going to destroy the sheep. And it's the same thing with these false teachers and false preachers. You're going to have people come into the flock, the assembly of Yahweh, and they're going to they're going to mess up and they're going to destroy the flock of Yahweh. That's why before it said that to take heed of yourselves and to the assembly, which uh, the Holy Spirit had made you an overseer. Okay, so to men, so men are right. Look at this. So, so uh, own servants among your own selves shall uh, men arise, speaking perverse things. Different perverse things. What does that mean? Perverse things is di something different than what the word of Yahweh says. AKA the prosperity gospel, the name it and claim it gospel. And others like that. So it gives us a stern warning here about how grievous wolves to are, are uh, going to come into the flock. Now I'm going to say something here. This uh, just a warning. It's up to you to uh, heed what I'm saying. But if you're teaching, if you're sitting in an assembly and you're you're listening. And you hear the word of Yahweh coming forth or from any assembly and it doesn't line up with the word of Yahweh I would say flee I would say leave that church and find another assembly because the teachings and preachings of today have gone astray from what the word of Yahweh says and that's going back to the name and claim the gospels, the uh, uh, the prosperity gospels, other gospels that we 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 can see that does not line up with the word of Yahweh. And I've heard people like this, what they taught and, and preached didn't quite line up with the word of Yahweh. It's just a warning. That we need to 
be careful of them. Because all we have to do is stray away from the gospel a little bit. You give the devil an inch, he'll, he'll take a mile. That if you, you, you stray just a little bit away, you'll find yourself comfortable there. You'll stray a little further away. All of a sudden, you'll find yourself totally lost. Maybe going to an assembly, but totally lost. Totally lost. How? How do I mean that? Going to an assembly, sitting there, and coming out more empty after the service than you did when you walked in. That's how I mean. Because why? Because we're not being fed the word of Yahweh. And that's where these grievous wolves come in. It's just grievous. They just want what they want for what they want. They want for themselves. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 and 16a. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Okay, look at that. That's just following up with the one we just had. The scripture we just had. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. They look good. They smell good. They dress good. They preach good. They, they, they're, they're good oracles of the word. But what's the scripture say? They are ravenous wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. What does it mean? We shall know them by our fruit, our fruits, their fruits. We shall know them by what they teach or preach from behind the pulpit. Does what they say line up with the word of Yahweh? If it does not, we need to be careful. They might be just ravenous wolves trying to sneak in to grab the sheep. So we need to be careful. It gives us a big warning right here. About false prophets. Psalms 55 verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than all, yet they were drawn swords. Wow, look at that. They were, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter. You know, you can have pastors and preachers and, and teachers and uh, people up behind a pulpit they have a PhD in in, uh, in this in the scriptures but they're as lost as a sinner you know you, you have a lot of preachers out there say I went to seminary okay yeah you went to seminary you learned in the seminary First of all, I don't agree with seminaries. I'll, I'll, I'll say that right off. Because everything that we learn, we need to learn from the word of Yahweh. They, they go to these seminaries. They sound good. They get taught well. They get up behind the pulpit. So they sound well. They, they're good oracles of the word. But again, does what they're saying. Line up with the word of Yahweh. We need to be careful that the words line up with what Yahweh's word says. Okay, we spoke about the assembly today. What the assembly today is like. How about oppression of the assembly or the church? And what do I mean that oppression? Keeping oppression is keeping a group of people down. Let's look at some scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 18. For first of all, when you come together in the assembly, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. Okay, now, this is one of the biggest breakups of the assemblies today division you know we're supposed to love one another scripture says you shall they shall know your 
you love Yahweh by your love one for another. Divisions among the, the assemblies. You know, divisions can separate and tear apart an assembly. If it's if it's personal, there's there's steps according to Matthew. The steps that are supposed to be taken when it comes to uh, disagreements or divisions among people. But then again, you have bigger divisions than that in scriptures and in assemblies. These is these. These uh, divisions can destroy an assembly. We need to be careful of the divisions. And he, he warns us here about, uh, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I partly do believe it. Divisions. Even in the, in the scriptures it talks about there was divisions in the assemblies. There should be no divisions among them. No divisions or schisms, according to Scripture. We need to work out our differences. We can agree to disagree on some things. I don't always agree with uh, other people and what they teach or preach. I don't always agree with the way they come off when they teach or preach. But I don't make... I don't go to them and try to tear it down, tear them down. You see, that's the problem today. That's the division in the assemblies today. People try to tear other people down. And this not, should not be in the assembly today. This should not be in the assembly at all today. We don't need to be tearing each other down. We need to be lifting each other up. Especially in these end times, when it's so close, so close to the end. It's so close to the, this, the uh, peace treaty being signed and the, and the temple being built. Look at the news. Now is not the time to be tearing each other down with division in the assemblies. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the assembly of Elohim. He's admitting here that he persecuted the assembly of Elohim. He knew, he knew, he came to the gospel though. He came to the revelation of who Yahweh Messiah was. But we see here that he, he, he knew he was destroying the assemblies. Of course, that's before he knew better. Galatians chapter 1, verse 13. For ye have heard of my conversation and time past in the Jews, religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the assembly of Yahweh and wasted it. Well, again, he says another scripture here. He's saying, he's saying the same thing, that he persecuted the assembly. He persecuted the assembly of Yahweh. But again, he came to the knowledge of Yahweh also. And so, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Savior, went unto the high priest. Okay, again, we see Saul here oppressing the assembly. We think this was just in Scripture. It is not. The assembly today is being oppressed. We're not, they're, they're trying to muffle us down so that we are not, we don't, we're not able to freely preach or teach the gospel. Even openly. And that's the way it is today. They're trying to muffle the assembly of Yahweh today. Acts chapter 22, verses 3 and 4. I am rarely a man which am a Jew, born in Tarshish, a city in Sicily, yet born up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward Elohim, as ye are all, 
ye are or this day. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prison both men and women. Wow, both men and women. So back then it wasn't even just the men, it was the men and women that were being persecuted. And it's the same thing today. It's men and women are not, were being persecuted for preaching and teaching the gospel. Do you know one way we're being oppressed in the assemblies today? Is when we have these media outlets and they censor what we can put on their, on their uh, internet site. That's an oppression. That's an oppression of the gospel. They don't want, they don't want certain things to go out. The, the media today, they, they censor so much what is taught, what is, is broadcasted out of these media outlets, whatever they are, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. They only want you to hear what they want you to hear. And it's going to be more and more and more with the assemblies today. That they're slowly they're going to try to more and more oppress and quiet the assembly of Yahweh today. A watered down gospel. What do I mean a watered down gospel? A watered down gospel. Okay, let me give you an example. I, if I had a cup of uh, lemonade here or something, some kind of liquid, and you put, you have it like this much filled with, with the, the uh, lemonade, and then you start putting water in it, and you have like this much water, what happens to the lemonade? It gets watered down. Sometimes we do that with medicines. We'll put it in a cup, or we'll take a lot of water to... to uh, water it down so it doesn't taste as bad. <laughs> That's a good example because we do that a lot today with our, the word of Yahweh. Water it down so it doesn't taste as bad. And that goes back to the, the pastors and preachers and teachers of today. They water it down so it doesn't taste as bad. They don't want to step on your toes. And it's sad. Let me give you a few examples that I've, I've read recently. There's a pastor that supports to take Yahweh back from the pro-life Christians, pro-life believers. He, he supports abortion. That is a total subject on its own. The, the subject of abortion, there's a lot of controversy back and forth with abortions. Uh, I do not, I don't feel the need to uh, project my feelings on abortion at this time. Uh, this is not the, the context of this message. But I'm showing here a pastor supports abortion and wants to take God back from the pro-life believers, Christians. It's sad. It's so sad. It becomes about a light show. Dancing around. On stage. Have you ever seen these. These, uh, these concerts. Gospel concerts. And even in assemblies today. You have these big. It looks like almost like a, a, a rock concert. Nowadays in the assemblies. And then these. 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 Uh, Big name singers that go out there. It's all about dancing on, out on the screens and lights and, and all that. Oh, it's a feel good message. It feels good at the time. But let me ask you something. Let me ask you. And all that. Do we feel any better? Say we go to one of these big name concerts for a couple hours, say. 
Do we feel any better the next day after coming home? Why? No, why? Because the problem we had to deal with is still there. We cannot deal, we cannot be, uh, we cannot be, uh, how's the, what's the word I wanted you to say? We, we cannot f fix the problems by going to some rock, some concert, some, some gospel concert somewhere for a couple of hours singing and dancing and waving our hands. The only solution we have is the word of Yahweh. Oh, it might feel good for a little while. But do you know the problem will still be there? You know, it, it's like uh, people who do drugs. You know, they, they do it and then they get off of it for a couple of weeks. They stop, they stop doing it completely for a couple of weeks. And they feel good. But they never dealt with the problem of the drugs or alcohol. It doesn't matter. Or any sin. Really. It could be any sin at all. You have to deal with the root problem. If you have a tree in your yard and you want to get rid of it, you can't just cut the tree down. Why? You have, why? Because you still have the roots of that tree. They're still in the ground. If you want to get rid of that tree, you need to get rid of the roots. It's the same thing with the Word. If we have a problem in our life, we need to get rid of that root problem. And that's not what the preachers or teachers are teaching today behind our pulpits. We don't get rid of the roots of the problem. We don't deal with the roots of that problem. And what happens? That problem will just creep up a little bit later. Or sometime later. Because we never dealt with the main problem of the roots. And it's the same thing with the word. You know. You know, a tree with its roots can be considered a type of the shadow of sin. And the word of Yahweh would be the shovel to get rid of the roots of that trait or that sin. The solution is in the scriptures. It's supposed to be about the gospel. And it's starting to be like uh, about the person preaching the gospel. And it's sad. That's a, the way it is. That's the way it is in some assemblies today. It's all about the person preaching the gospel. Instead of the gospel. It's no longer about what's being preached. It's about who's preaching it. It becomes a show instead of a service. It becomes about the singers instead of the message behind the songs. It becomes about the messaging of the ego of the saints. I'm sorry, massaging the ego of the saints instead of the genuine move of the Holy Spirit. Let's pet the saints. Let's not mess their their fur up, their ego. Don't step on their toes because they give their tithes and offerings to us. It becomes about baby in the saints. The baby in the saints instead of baptizing the saints. And this is all about that uh, 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 pressure, the watered down gospel. We're, more saints are being babied in the assemblies today instead of being baptized. It becomes more about tickling the ears of the saints instead of pricking their hearts.
Let me tell you. Today, in the assemblies, we need to wake up. We need to, to stop preaching a watered-down gospel. A feel-good gospel. A don't-step-on-my-toes tep type gospel. Do you know the word of Yahweh steps on our toes? Messiah, uh, over and over again, points this out in Scripture. Throughout the Gospels. He always stepped on their toes. Where did we go from that? You know, we need to get back to that. The way Messiah taught. We need to be able to step on people's toes. We need to be able to tell people, sin is sin. Instead of, you're okay. You're okay, don't worry. You'll be okay. You just give me your tithes and offerings. And you think that, you might be laughing and say, wow, <laughs> that's funny. But no, it's serious. There's a lot of pastors and preachers and teachers out there that are like that. It's sad. It's very, very sad. We're going to look at two scriptures here and then we're going to close this out. Isaiah chapter 3 verses 9 and 10. The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom, they hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous that it should be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Wow, look at that. It shall be well with them. You know, we can... Uh, in, uh, we could say, oh, well, it'll be well with you. How do I mean well with you? We don't speak like that in the modern English today. Oh, the, another way we would say it in the modern English today would be, oh, you're okay. You're okay. Instead of telling them, no, you need to get out of your sin. You're in sin. You need to get out of that. You are where you are because of the choices you've made. That's how it needs to be preached and teach, taught. But it's not taught like that from behind our, uh, our pulpits anymore. All we see is a watered down gospel, a watered down teaching. And that's very, very, very sad. We're going to close with Isaiah chapter 30, verses 8 and 9. Now go, write it before them in a table. And note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of Yahweh. This is the assembly today. You know, we some some people leave an assembly. If they come to an assembly that that teaches sin as sin. And believe and go look for a church, an assembly that won't tick, that won't step on their toes, but tickle their ear. And this is the way the assemblies are today: it's a watered down gospel, a watered down assembly. And it's sad because this is the way the assembly is today, in a lot of assemblies. Again, not all assemblies. So we saw today, we talked about the assembly and the false teachers. We saw the oppression of the assembly. Paul, or Saul, how he oppressed the assemblies. And how it happens today, where we, uh, the, the assembly is oppressed, muffled. If you might want to put it that way. And then we look at the watered down gospel. So we see today how the assembly is. Yahweh's Learning Channel thanks you for watching this video. We hope you were edified by this content. Reach out to us with the information provided on screen. Or you may click on the links to view more of our videos. Please subscribe to be notified of new uploads. Until next time. Shalom.